What's going on guys? Welcome back to Learn Crypto. Obviously, we are not in our normal live studio. I'm at home. I wanted to do some crypto news fundamentals and a little bit of technical analysis for you as well. Todd is sick, but don't worry. Go to the YouTube homepage. Go to the crypto technical analysis uh, section on there. It's a TA for stocks and cryptos. He did do a, about a 10 minute video a little bit earlier today because obviously, as you can see here, we are seeing a red day. So we want to make sure, sun or shine, sick or healthy, that we did a video and we're here for the community. So check that out after this one. We're going to talk about a few quick articles here, uh, as well as some technical analysis and some tweets. And that's about it. You know, to start it off like usual, the market capitalization is down several billion dollars from last night's live show down to 123.475. Whoa, Bitcoin dominance is up almost a percent to 52.2%. And it looks like I just got a rapid score stake here. You might see a, several of those pop up. We'll see what happens. And uh, but not not looking good. Bitcoin is down nine percent to thirty six eighty seven. XRP down to thirty three cents. Ethereum taking a fourteen percent hit. Bitcoin Cash, no surprise, seventeen percent hit. EOS seventeen percent hit. Stellar eleven. Nothing good here. And it's never good when the only thing green is Tether. Uh, that means a lot of people are fleeing their cryptocurrencies, going into the stablecoin to look for a better re-entry back into this crypto market. We do have some coins green today. Shout out to you guys if you hold Aurora coin. Verge, haven't heard that name in a while. Now it's below uh, just above half a penny. That thing I know was nine and a half cents when they were doing the release of a release of a release, which turned into them being integrated on Pornhub as a payment option. So that thing has come down. I haven't even heard that name in a while. Status, DAO, and USD coin. These are all going to be, what do you guessed it? Not good. These are all the stable coins right here, bunched up, slightly green for the day. First order of business. Everybody's been waiting for some bullish news. Is it going to be backed? Is it going to be the Vanek ETF? Is it going to be Eris X? Well, what's this? Bitwise files for a new Bitcoin ETF with the SEC. Well, why is this special, Nick? All the rest have been denied. We got the Vanek. That's supposed to be the the rah rah, the one that we get. But if you read the underlying, this Bitwise one has me interested, kind of for the same reasons that we talk about with backed exchange, because it is physically delivered with Bitcoin, not cash delivered. That's what we want to see. That is what is bullish for the scarcity of cryptocurrencies, and if more investors come into the space, because they won't be receiving cash for their good trades, but Bitcoin off of the market. Crypto startup Bitwise Asset Management has proposed a new Bitcoin exchange traded fund, ETF, that it says would address the regulatory, regulatory concerns that doomed previous attempts. From each of these failures, you would hope that these companies or these proposals would start to uh, fix some of the issues that the CFTC or the SEC may see with the underlying proposal. At least that's, that's the concept and that's what you would hope. The company has filed an intentional registration form proposing the Bitwise Bitcoin ETF Trust with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC. The fund would track the Bitwise Bitcoin Total Return Index, which measures the value of Bitcoin plus any meaningful hard forks. This one has me a little confused. Uh, so the ETF is going to then include previous hard forks like Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV, or just future hard forks, which I hope uh, don't come anytime soon because... They've just been a debacle as of late. If the ETF is approved, its shares will be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Oh, wait. No, that's not right. The New York Stock Exchange, ARCA, which focuses on trading stocks and options rather than large cap stocks, which are traded on the actual New York Stock Exchange. The initial registration statement indicates that Bitwise wants to underpin its index for the valuation of the fund with spot rates from exchanges and physically settled futures contracts, rather than cash settles contracts, as earlier proposed ETFs would have done. Maybe they will be getting some of their data from backed exchange if that does indeed launch here at the end of January, which I know a lot of people are concerned because right now here in the United States, the government is shut down. With the government shut down, that might slow down the approval from the CFTC and once again may delay the backed exchange. Maybe the little bit of drop off we saw in Bitcoin today is some insider information that backed will be delayed. But again, the macro fundamentals for the backed, for the ETF, and for this whole cryptocurrency ecosystem has not changed. Merely the timeline of these fundamentals coming into play has. Quote, we believe that the crypto trading ecosystem has evolved in significant ways in the past year. 
Having a regulated bank or trust company hold physical assets of a fund has been the standard under the U.S. fund regulation for the last 80 years, and we believe that that is, not, that is now possible with Bitcoin. That is very important. This is part of their proposal, and this is what might get the CFTC to give it the head nod, as now it is in line with the other last 80 years of regulatory guidance for these ETFs and these exchange-traded funds. Further, Highland said, quote, we are optimistic that 2019 should be the year that a Bitcoin ETF launches. They also did give a shout out to VanEck and SolidX as their ETF final approval or denial has to come by February 27th, 2019. For six months or eight months now, I have already predicted that they would come down to the final vote. I said, nope, they're all going to get denied until the final vote, which is on February 27th. And I even have been saying that I believe the actual information will become public on February 25th, 2019. Let me know if you guys think that a Bitcoin ETF will get approved in 2019 and which one of these two applications that still stand or a separate, totally new application that might come here in the future will be approved or disproved for this Bitcoin ETF. Here's kind of one of the things where, you know, you get these titles. And I always say, guys, first of all, you can't trust a lot of the news you read. Todd, in the video he did a couple hours ago, pointed this out pretty bluntly uh, about people using uh, these articles and spreading misinformation. And really, that's also the journalist and the article's fault as well, as they shouldn't publish publish falsified information but it still is on each and every one of us to do your own research dig deeper and take all of these with a grain of salt now the contents of this arg article are factual but i do not like these clickbait headlines two-thirds of korean crypto exchanges fail government security check uh-oh they're all going to close down you're going to lose your funds crypto's doomed right not quite only a third of cryptocurrency exchanges inspected got a full pass in recent government security audit the Ministry of Science and ICT, the Korea Internet and Security Agency, and the Ministry of Economy and Finance inspected a total of 21 crypto exchanges from September to December 2018, examining 85 different security aspects. So merely what they're going to say here is that these are the seven that you should be trading on, the other 14 you should not be trading on, and they are not currently shutting their doors, but giving them information that they need to upgrade their security, otherwise they would be deemed uh, illegal or not regulatory compliant, and then they will have to in turn shut their doors. The only seven that did pass a security test, so if you use any of these, you're good to go. If you use any other South Korean exchange, I would recommend moving them off that exchange because there's plenty of other options, whether it's Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, Binance, Bittrex are one of these seven I'm about to name. Upbit, Bithum, Gopax, Corbit, Coin1, HanBitco, and Huobi Korea cleared all the tests. Coindesk Korea reported on Thursday, that is today. Again, guys, this does not mean that Korea is against cryptocurrencies. If anything, this means Korea is ahead of the time. South Korea has put together uh, regulatory groups and regulatory guidelines in order to do security audits uh, on these exchanges and on other crypto platforms. If you trade with a Korean exchange, make sure it's one of these seven. I don't want to see the sob story of you guys losing your coins. I'm telling you right now, use one of these security audited ones, Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, or Binance, and you should be good to go. Is this what caused the red today? I don't know. If people just read the title, maybe it is, but I, I'm leaning, there's no real news on why Bitcoin dumped. We'll talk about some price action here in a second. Maybe it's insider information on the backed. Maybe it's insider information on the ETF for February. Or maybe it's just misinformed headlines like this and the one pertaining to the billionaire hedge fund that Todd talked about earlier. Let's see what we got here. So we all know that oof, things got ugly here in the crypto market. Why do I have ETC up? This is one that I said in the live show I would be liking to buy on or any further drop. Let me move my picture so you can see what's going on here. Currently, we are at $4.64. Uh, when Bitcoin fell earlier today, we were around 5 bucks, and we came down pretty hard, but we're trying to rally back. Um, we'll go into maybe some Elliott Wave counts at the Bitcoin chart. It'll be a little, more, a little easier to understand than this ETC one. Essentially, I said I would buy this lower last night in the live show. As you can see on the order book down here, because we are always transparent here on Learn Crypto, we don't lie about trades, we make them because we have a Patreon and Discord channel that can verify those as well. <clears throat> I had some sells at 501, let's see what the price is up here. 
Oh. 501. Interesting right there. And then I started having some buys. My first fills were on this first major drop down to $4.53. Uh, to, to the penny of this wick. To the penny of this wick right here. $4.53. We had a little bit of rally. I got a little excited. We saw one more dump. So we did have some more fills here at $4.45. Not quite to the penny on this one, but we still are higher here so far. Shout out to Chris K9 asking me about some fib levels about four days ago. I said theoretically the fib levels line up for ETC to get down into the four dollar and thirties. So I just gave him hey a nine cent range there. We did get down to four thirty. So if you put your orders or on that fib level, Chris K9, I'm talking to you. You did get filled, and we are up thirty cents off of those lows. There's the order book. I would just ask that people that brag about trades here and there, it's super easy to do. Uh, type in snip clip down here, drag, drop, copy, and paste into Twitter, as we all need uh, transparency in this ecosystem. That's the reason cryptocurrencies were created, after all, right? Immu immutable and transparent monetary uh, system. So we need to be transparent with what we do in this ecosystem, especially if you're charging uh, Patreons or private groups or even putting content out on YouTube as you do earn ad revenues. And you kind of have a almost a fiduciary duty to your community to uh, be transparent and, you know, do everything in good intentions for them as well. Okay, let's take a look at BTC. I don't like that one. Let's do USD. It's easy to see what's going on here. <clears throat> All right. So as you can see down here, my most recent buys are 40, 51. You'd be like, oh, Nick, where was that? That's way above here. Uh, these are on swing trades. So we start scrolling down here. You know, you can see what's going on with $3,000, uh, 3,900, et cetera. All the way back to even some buys in the 16K and 8K range from, from all the way near the highs last year. Um, so you can see all that, but we did have this nice rally and a lot of people were looking at this to hopefully be, be a uh, bull flag here. And then we were going to have a measured move. If you took this uh, candlestick put on top, the measured move would be around $4,250. As you know, we did get the rally, but it only got up to 4120 or 4112, somewhere around there. Um, we did have orders to sell around 4,200 bucks. Didn't quite get there. So unfortunately didn't really get a lot of our fills there. Nonetheless, uh, we saw this ma massive correction today. Um, Todd did an Elliott Wave count and saying that this could be the end of the third wave, meaning we'll have a fourth wave up around here, probably in 3,700. We are starting to get up to that target, and then possibly the final fifth wave down here into the $3,500 range. Now, is that something to panic about? If the ending fifth wave can stay in the 3,500s, I'm not too worried. The reason being that we've been on this key level for a very long time, and that is 3440. So we actually had, uh, on, we said that the lows would be 3100 or 3000 to 3200. Uh, the, the low was actually $3,124. So if you got in on that, that is awesome. Todd said once we got to 3440, that's when we really become bullish, and that's where we really started to make this move higher. 3440 has been the the key point that we are watching. As long as we remain above 3440, then we believe that the lows are currently in for this current market cycle. That ending fifth wave, if in, in fact we are doing a fourth right now with this little bit of green we're seeing, is going to put us right on that borderline around 3500. What I would say is, man, I'm still looking at this 3440 level. We need to hold above that. If we close even on an hourly below the 3440, I really believe new localized lows are going to form with a price target of 2.8K to $3,000 Bitcoin. Now, for you who hodl, does that mean you panic and you try to sell here? No, I'm not, not really trying to get fancy with it, but I just want you to be aware of what is going on and the potential there. If you are a day trader, maybe you'll start to key off that and add that to your arsenal and your tools and your opinions as well. Now. Let's get dig in a little deeper here and see what is going on and, uh, you know, kind of what we saw coming and where where we didn't want to see. So I said that I did not want to see price action below this wick right here, this 3440 level. If we got below there, I thought that we were going to make a bullish move or a bearish move lower. Well, maybe that's what caused this. Maybe a lot of people saw this wick as well, had a lot of stops here around 34, 39, 40, sorry, and 39, 50. Once we hit that, all these stop limits got triggered, and that's what caused this 
this uh, meltdown here to this level at 3,700, and then, of course, all the slow pokes and the uh, the uh, people who do a lot of FOMO trading and emotional trading saw this dump. They got scared, and they dumped further. Uh, that is a possibility there. Well, Nick, when did you say that? I don't hear that. Todd always does the TNA. This is our private Discord, so I'm not going to show you much. But yesterday at 9.06 a.m., I see it said BTC still putting in higher lows on the one hour. Again, I do not want to see it go below, go below the 39.44 as discussed above. So I was talking about this even before 9 a.m. yesterday. So about for two days now, I have been looking and, and watching this wick. Um, earlier today, later today, I mean, I kind of made a joke because... Uh, you know, I didn't even take my own advice. I didn't have stops. I didn't have stop limits there. And the uh, price action moved so fast, obviously, I couldn't catch it. I really wasn't looking to shorten the 3700 range. And we have come a little deeper. Um, uh, we've had a couple buys. Zen did hit its all-time low. All-time low in Satoshi price. Uh, if you guys know I love passive income, I wanted ahead and scooped up another uh, super node around 1220 I think it's 120,200 Satoshis. Uh, it is up a little higher now, but I still think that's a great opportunity at these levels uh, if you're interested in passive income, either with a secure node with 42 Zen or a super node with 500 Zen. We also did some nice trades that you can see on my uh, Twitter on NEO and on ADA. I'm not going to waste time and go through all of this. You guys can read and come check out my Twitter at StuNod620. Uh, stay up to date with it and see what's going on. Um, and then really lastly... Uh, you guys know I am a big video game player, so maybe this weekend if I have some free time, tune in to Twitch. Maybe you'll see me a little out of my element, a little less professional, uh, playing some games, probably raging because I haven't been able to play near as much, playing League of Legends. Uh, Rapids here is happy to announce Rapids are setting up their own esports team called Team RPD, created a page over on Twitch. So maybe follow that and get involved there. Uh, yet again, another announcement from Rapids trying to create more utilizations, integrations, uh, and use cases for the RPD token. Uh, today, some individuals from the team, the founder, Corey, streamed some Fortnite and gave away some RPD red packets, which is a way to share RPD via a URL. Anywhere you can send out a chat, people can claim it. And currently, I know the developers are trying to work on a bot or an application where individuals, when they're watching uh, the Team Rapids stream on Twitch can actually tip or receive tips via that RPD token, which is what we like to see. So maybe you'll see me this weekend streaming some League of Legends and probably doing some losing. <laughs> Here also, if you don't, if you can't find it on the homepage, you can find Todd's most recent uh, video from this morning talking about the sell-off. He did some technical analysis on Litecoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, and others, as well as looked at the stock market. Uh, we did have some closes on longs on the stock market, and he gave some re-entries for some of the stocks that we like, including AMD and Square, I believe. So I would definitely go and check that out. That is really about all I got. We just wanted to get on here, do a couple news articles, go over the market, see what's going on. Hopefully some of that TA and those levels. Keep an eye on that 3440 level on Bitcoin. I'm not afraid to buy ETC down here. You saw where I got fills at. And uh, yes, I'm interested in getting involved in Ethereum with their Constantinople hard fork coming up quickly. And they are going to have some proof of stake on their network coming soon as well. So it would be nice to be able to stake some Ethereum. I think others are, are thinking that route as well. Uh, also, Constantinople does add some important, important scaling um, solutions that Ethereum has had all this year with CryptoKitties, for example. Uh, but I am not buying here at the 130 level. I'm waiting for, hoping for a little more of a pullback. I think my first orders are in around $116 for Ethereum. Uh, that isn't an in-depth FIB level or TA or anything like that. I think that is just a uh, support level that could be attained during this current bear sentiment and one that I'll be happy with. You know, if you watch the show, I said if Ethereum gets back down to $100 is where I'll really be thrilled and really go hard and long on Ethereum with their upcoming Constantinople protocol upgrade. That's all I got. Leave the questions in the comment section below. If I missed anything or skipped something, you got to understand, you know, it's after work here. This isn't the normal studio. I just wanted to make sure to do this for you guys. So let me know down there. Smash that like button. Smash that subscribe button. And tune in to our live shows. We try to do it Monday through Thursday live at 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Myself and the Todd Father doing technical analysis. Try to be the duo and the one-stop shop for all your investment needs. Crypto TA, FA, news, and we even dabble in the stocks and commodities as well.
Until next time, stay tuned for your daily updates on cryptocurrencies right here at Learn Crypto.